Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to Educate Lee Geography. Today we're going to be talking about different map projections, so let's get started. Um, today's objectives, um, first we're just going to explain what map projections are, in case you're not aware. Um, second, we're just going to get the three main types of map projections. All map projections, or most map projections can be divided into these three main categories, depending on how they're created. And third, we're just going to provide specific examples of projections that are commonly used by geographers and everyday people alike. So first, what are map projections? Um, first, you have to know um, that the Earth is a three-dimensional sphere, or it's close to it, as I'm sure you know, but maps depict it as two-dimensional, like on a flat surface. As a result, like because the Earth, it isn't two-dimensional, it isn't flat, and any 2D map that we make of the Earth is gonna have some inaccuracies. Either it's going to be distorted in some way, or if we're not going to, if we don't want to distort the continents, we have to distort the oceans or just the shape. We just have to change the way it looks. We can't make a perfect two-dimensional map. It's mathematically impossible. Um, so that means there's kind of like so many map projections that have evolved and like been created over time based on like different things. Sometimes geographers have wanted to make maps that are good at one thing, such as navigating the seas over something else because they may have drawbacks. Every map basically has a drawback in some way and some positives. So they're good in different aspects. So there are three types of map projections based on how maps are created. The first type is known as a cylindrical projection. Um, this, this, these explanations get kind of math, like mathematical. So this might not make full sense at this level, at like a middle school level, you don't have to know the actual math or much of the actual math behind this. So I'm just going to give the basics. Um, a cylindrical projection, I'm, I'm, aware, I'm sure you're aware of what a cylinder is. It's basically a circle, but three-dimensional and that there's a height aspect added to it, as you can see with my pointer. Um, keep in mind the source of this image. We don't own this image. Um, in a sense, um, a cylindrical projection of a map, it maps the spherical Earth on this cylinder. So if you can imagine you're like rolling up a cylinder like a, there's like a rectangular map, like you have a rectangular map right here. Imagine you're like rolling it into a cylinder. And in a sense, the map is just like the sphere getting cast onto that cylinder. So yeah, it's hard to visualize. Just keep in mind, it's just derived off a cylinder. Um, an interesting thing to note with cylindrical projections of maps is that the latitude and longitude lines are generally horizontal and vertical. So if there, we have different we have a different video about the actual parts of a map like latitude and longitude lines but as a quick review latitude lines go horizontally on these types of maps and longitude lines go vertically and you know they go east to west while latitude talks about north versus south um this is assuming that the poles of the globe so like you know if you can look at my pointer it's like the north pole and the south pole they align perfectly with the top and the bottom of the cylinder that's something you're going to see on most basic cylindrical projections. Um, the most common cylindrical projection is the Mercator map. That's the map Google Maps uses. And we're gonna talk about all the specific types or common ones later. Just know that this is these maps are cast onto a cylinder or like a tube shape. Next up, we have conic projections. This one gets a little complicated. So basically it's kind of like cylindrical projections except for they're cast onto a cone shape and not a cylinder shape so imagine you're like kind of unfolding or like casting everything on this spherical earth onto the cone so it's like kind of like when you unfold it ends up being a little bit in an ice cream shape there's like a little divot right here because it's not going to be like a perfect rectangle or square like a cylindrical map uh, conic projections have one or two standard parallels standard parallels are places i mean to put it basically it's when you have this sphere and like this cone that's like you're projecting it onto like you're projecting the map onto this cone where it enters the latitudes at which it the sphere intersects the cone those are known as standard parallels and basically those are the latitudes at which you're going to have the least distortion with conic projections because if you look back i should have mentioned this with cylindrical projections like especially the mercator projection which is very common you tend to have a, a lot of distortion near the poles like if you look at antarctica antarctica isn't actually this big like it's small compared to the other continents but the many cylindrical projections make it look extremely big like the as big as like pretty much all of the other continents that's not true and obviously with the real globe that's just a distortion that's caused by as a result um with conic projections you have 
um you also have distortion obviously but near those standard parallels where you know this intersection occurs that's where it's most that's where the least distortion happens if sometimes there can be one standard parallel if it, the sphere only intersects the cone once there's two if it intersects twice again it's complicated i'm not going to dive into that here that's a more deep you you, you need more mathematical understanding to like grasp those concepts just know that if there's like two standard parallels say like this parallel line this latitude and this latitude those are the standard parallels i'm not sure what the actual ones are for this map everything between it would actually be kind of squished but everything away from it like here or here would be distorted vertically so yeah distortion increases as you move further away from the standard parallels Third, you have planar or as a more sciencey word, azimuthal, azimuthal projections. Um, these are a bit more basic. They just portray the spherical Earth on a flat circle. So it's like this is like the northern hemisphere of the. Um, I mean, you can imagine it to be the northern hemisphere of the spherical Earth, and you're just getting cast onto this flat plane. A plane is just like a flat two-dimensional space in geometry, and everything's as you can see here is just getting casted onto that. Um. Generally, they only depict half the planet, as you can see here, just from the way planes work. You can make it, or there are many um, azimuthal projections that depict more than half. It's just that it gets it gets extremely distorted because, as you as you can see, like with the latitude lines, they make perfect circles, but they get more and more spread out as you go away, and as it, it just becomes more distorted, just the way it works. So usually, they won't. Like as in useful projections won't depict more than half the planet or not more than three quarters. They're not just going to depict the most of the time the entire both of the hemispheres, north and south. And usually they're centered at the poles, by the way. Um, and the, the one reason that these maps are actually used is to study the poles and like for especially in Arctica, because other map projections tend to heavily distort that part of the world. So it's like because as you can see, there's like azimuthal projections are most accurate at the center of the plane which is usually centered at the poles um obviously this isn't antarctica this is the north pole if you went to the south pole you just have like antarctica right here in the middle it would be perfectly aligned and it would be very distorted so it's good for studying arctic regions and antarctica that's what it's mainly used for um so now let's look at specific map projections like those are just the types like how people create maps like using like different projections but these are like specific maps that have been created um the most common one i that if you know any projections you probably know this one it's the mercator projection we're not going to have any text on these slides we're just going to i'm just going to use my pointer to like point out some key aspects uh this has been a lot around for i think around probably 450 500 years at least by now um or specifically that's when the term mercator projection and this type of map you know, it's, it's been around for a while, and it was used very frequently for navigation in that era, and even since then, in recent years. Um, because the way, it's, it's hard to explain without getting mathematical, but basically, um, it's very easy to calculate exact angles, especially, like, if you were sailing back then, and you needed to, like, sail at a specific angle, say, from here to, like, here, and, like, on, along a specific path, it would be very easy to, like, kind of use a compass calculate like the angle that you need on the map and just use it in real life it's, it's it was it was very good for navigational purposes i think you can all see a bunch of caveats with the map though first of all you can obviously see antarctica i dived into this a little bit before antarctica isn't that big antarctica is smaller than most of the other continents yet it looks pretty much bigger than the entire world here that's it's just a distortion as you get closer to the poles you tend to see distortion with this map it's just a caveat because you can't depict a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional um shape also i think it's easy like look at distortion if you look at greenland in real life and i think this is what a lot of people don't understand it's like greenland's actually very tiny compared to like say africa greenland's 14 times smaller than africa area wise in real life but here it looks substantially bigger than Africa. And if we look at this next map, the Gaul Peters projection, this is kind of like made as a result of that distortion. Because if you look at the Mercator projection, you can kind of notice, and this is what the next projection was like fighting against. Um, you have a lot of a like European Asian, like you have Russia and like I guess northern China is also distorted. And then you have like Canada and like Alaska that's a state in the United States and Greenland, you have all these like the European, Asian, North American countries that tend to be like 
and states that tend to be like rich and a part of rich countries. But meanwhile, you have countries towards the equator that tend they tend to be poor. Like countries near the equator tend to be poorer than countries that are northern up and like higher up in like Europe and North America. And what this projection, the Gulf Peters projection, it meant it meant to like kind of erase that thought of like supremacy. Because if you always look at a map and you think of Greenland being bigger than Africa, which is just not true. A lot of people, I guess, like, especially younger kids, they might think that, like, they might link that to a supremacy or, like, some sort of suppression of these poor nations or, like, nations that tend to be poor. So this kind of distorts it in a different way. It makes it makes greater distortion around the equator. So these more underrepresented um, nations get more spotlight. And I think that's interesting. It's, like, these maps aren't necessarily just used to look at the world, but they're also used to just, I guess, change the way you look at it, not just to, like, explore uh, next up, we have the Winkle triple projection. Um, by the way, these last two maps, the um, Gal Peters and the Mercator, those were um, cylindrical. This one, I believe, is um, it's derived from, I believe, um, a stereographic, which is another word for a planner, or planner. And it's basically it was made about I think in the nineteen early nineteen hundreds. And it's, as you can see, it's just a more realistic way, in a sense, of depicting the world. It was designed to just be, in a sense, more, look more realistic than the Mercator projection. Like, as you can see, the shapes and, like, the areas are a bit, you know, more realistic. There obviously is still going to be some distortion, but Greenland is no longer, say, like, 14 times bigger than, or, like, Greenland is 14 times smaller than Africa, but it's no longer appears to be much bigger on this map it looks substantially smaller not as small as as it is in real life but yeah it's just a more realistic depiction of the world in a sense it still has its caveats and note that the latitude and um even the longitude lines are no longer straight they're curved taking into account of the earth's curvature uh this one looks a bit similar as the robinson projection uh the thing that's interesting about this map it's considered um pseudo cylindrical so it's like cylindrical but it has some other aspects to it um, it was designed in mostly empirically just to make, like, a visual map that looks kind of like the world that you can, like, recognize, like, visually. So it's pretty interesting, like, the way it was designed. Like, the, um, creator used, like, I guess, like, some sort, sort of, like, mathematical simulations to just make sure it looks like it passes the eye test. So, yeah, obviously you still have some distortion. There's a lot of east-west. I guess, it, like, this one looks, like, a little smushed towards the top. But this is a projection that a lot of people, a lot of magazines and a lot of science um, headquarters use now. If not, they often use the Winkle triple projection also because it's you know, more curved. I guess that creates less distortion compared to like the more wide aspect of this. But yeah, these are two, especially these last two are like ones that are commonly used in science these days. Um, the Lambert conformal conic projection. This is a conic um, map. That's the only one we're going to cover in detail. Um, conic maps are a bit weird, and they've been around for a while. This specific one, I believe it's been around for a few hundred years now also. Really, the only use for them is, like, in aviation. They are used in many, like, airplanes as, like, radars, especially airplanes that are traveling along specific latitude lines. Because as I, I talked about the specific, like, you know, like, the parallels where they're most accurate, as you go away, and I think you can see... Um, like as you go away from the standard parallels as you can see with this map it becomes very distorted so these aren't very good for depicting the entire world but they are pretty good at short like small scales and like when you're at a specific latitude so if you're like an airline that's traveling from like the uk to say like toronto which is in this area you're traveling basically around like along the same latitude line and if that's around where this um the standard parallel is for the conic map it's like it works. It's not very distorted. Obviously, it's curved. But it has some features that make it easy to use in aviation. That's something that's cool. Um, later on, you get into, like, more, you know, wild types of maps. This is especially a more, like, modern thing that's happening that doesn't really, like, match up with, like, the types of maps we talked about. This is known as the orthograph projection. And I think you can see that it's not, like, it doesn't really fit into any of the categories we talked about. Um... Just to like give a brief introduction of how it was created, um, the creator and I forgot his name, but in back in like I believe it was created in nineteen ninety nine, so it's very recent. He kind of divided the world into a series of like ninety six, like triangles, and he like folded them up into like a shape, just divided them into that. 
and the purpose of this map i believe is um it preserve it, it isn't like an equal area map or like a perfectly proportional map but it does a very good job in preserving actual shape and actual area um i think a good example of this i like using greenland as an example like greenland that's right there right now this is africa and greenland is no longer larger than africa in fact it looks to be about 14 times less by the eye test 14 times smaller than africa as a continent um which is pretty realistic given what it looks like on a on like how it looks like from space so yeah and antarctica is no longer like the entire world it's it's it depicts things realistically but as you can see like if you're going to depict things realistically like size wise and like like this on a map you have to like trade it off with something and in this case it just trades off with like the way the world actually looks like latitude lines are just wacky and they're just going everywhere i'm sure you know that this is not how an actual how the actual world looks so yeah um that does it for this video i hope you found it interesting to just look at these different ways to view the world and that really just changes the perspective that many people have when looking at the world instead of just looking at one map it kind of gives these different ways to look at things that's interesting and if you have any other questions about this topic um feel free or like about geography as a whole feel free to browse our site we also have other subjects um here at educately so check that out if you're interested but until then that does it so thanks for watching